multiplayer game, single player game, any game as a game mode that drives the way the player play your game. For example, in Fortnite, the last standing team win the match. In Overwatch, the defender should defend the payload or the attacker should attack. And this is driven by the game mode, which is extremely important and can even receive innovation to create new genre. Just think about the battle royales when the first time they came out. The really the only innovation was on the game mode. In this video, I will show how I have integrated the game mode in Flying Toys, which is a multiplayer game so that you can take it as an example to implement it in your game. So let's start by showing the, all the faces that make the game mode in Flying Toys. The first face is very important because it allows all the players to connect to the server. This lasts always 60 seconds or something like that and all the players that connect before the ending of this time they can choose the character, adjust skins and do things like that. Once this phase is done, we have the game phase that are made of three phases that go in loop. The first one is the phase that allows the player to adjust the cannon direction before the shot. Then we have the matching phase where all the players can fight using the abilities and uh, everything that the character provides. And then we have the watching goal that starts as soon as someone scores the goal, last few seconds allowing the players to uh, show off or do things like that. And then it starts from the beginning. The last phase is the victory that happens as soon as the time runs out. So all these phases together makes the game mode in Flying Toys as, again, these three phases are the game phases that go in loop and the timer goes on from the phase 1 to phase 3 and they start until the timer runs out. Something that I want to make you notice is that only the middle phase, the one where the players, the teams fight with the abilities, is the one where the timer is ticking. During the other two phases, the timer is uh, completely paused. All this logic is integrated by the game mode and the game state. The game mode is an actor that is responsible for driving the logic. This actor is only and ever spawned on the server and the game state is an actor that is spawned everywhere and this actor can be used in order to exchange information between the server and the clients. How it works? Basically the game mode has a bunch of properties that are synchronized on the game state and change these properties according to the game mode. For example, in the phase one, we have a timer that ticks for 60 seconds and this timer is on the game mode and once it's updated, it's set on the game state and the game state replicates this property to all the clients that can visualize the timer on the clients. You see the timer on the top right right here. The same happened during the game. And here we are in C++, match game mode and match game state. The match game mode is responsible for the logic it runs on the server and has all the information that are needed for the logic itself, for the authoritative logic, for example the timers and things like that. While the match game state has a bunch of properties that are needed for the clients to understand the game state on the server and these properties are all replicated. But I will go on these in a second. First I want to start from the match game mode in order to show what is the flow and how it works. Everything in Flying Toys starts from the on post login. When a new player is connected, the game mode execute this function and this function on the server side starts a new match. What it does is starting a countdown on the server remembers this and also very important, it sets the match state to match starting. This is very important because for the first time we are notifying the game state that the phase is changed. 
again if we check this function here on the game state we can notice that we are just setting the match state on the server but since this is a replicated properties what the server does is to also notify all the clients about the change using the on wrap on match state change i am assuming that you already know how the networking in a real engine works so i will skip the explanation of that this function is executed on the client and depending on the state that it is on it does something for example when the match starting is set what it does is to spawn the ui that allow the clients to select the character that they want to use once the timer on the server is done this function on match starting phase waiting done is executed and once again what this function is calling the game start preplay this function is very similar to the one that we just saw to start the match because as another call to this function set matching state but this time we are setting play pre-start again here we are on the server and the server will notify all the clients that again will be notified using the on wrap on match state change this time we are not any longer on the match starting but we are on the gameplay pre-start so the clients know that as to remove the UI to select the player selection, the character selection, and uh, start a new UI that shows the countdown, the 3, 2, 1, go. And this is the way the communication happened between game mode and the game state between the server and between the clients. And now that you understand the base communication, I want to one step farther showing how I synchronize the timer which I think is extremely important for most of you. Of course there are many ways to synchronize the timer from the most elaborate solution to the simpler one. The most elaborate solution allows to have an extremely perfect timer on all the clients with a very complicated logic without consuming a lot of bandwidth and the less elaborate solution takes more bandwidth but does not require a lot of logic and i have chosen to that route i wanted to have a super simple timer that allow me to control everything through the game mode and this function is uh, responsible to update the timer this function here is executed each one second and uh, the game mode up, keep updating it each one second. So what this function is doing is just notifying the game state that the timer, the timer remaining is changed. And basically, as for the match state, the property is updated on the client via the replication algorithm. And once the property is replicated via the on wrap on match time change, we execute the event on match time change that updates the UI on the client. This setup is extremely simple, consume bandwidth, yes, but allows the game mode to pause and unpause the time as it wishes without the need to integrate very complicated logic and that's everything i wanted to say for this video if i forgot to say something or you would like to know more about something else comment below or join discord i will be super happy to help you in any way i can thank you very much see you later bye